All right, y'all, so it is two days before my pop-up. I'm really excited. Like, I thought I'd be nervous. Not nervous, I'm excited. Honestly, the only reason I thought I'd be nervous is because I thought that a ton of other people are gonna have like really good heat and I got some heat, but I don't have a ton of it. I'm kind of coming with a lot more like $5, $10 pieces, but then I do have this rack, which is all my really good stuff, which I'll show you guys. So I'll show you guys kind of how I laid it out too. It's Thursday, pop-up Saturday. I did my last like bins trip today. My last little final touches, you know, are being made now and tomorrow morning before I pack my car and head down there. So yeah, this is gonna be just a vlog about my experience doing my first pop-up. I think it's kind of a cool and interesting video to do, especially because I've never done anything like this before. So I'll show you guys how I have it set up and what I'm bringing and everything. And then I'll get some clips of me heading down there and maybe hitting up some thrifts on the way and just the layout, the general layout of the pop-up. So I'm really excited and I'm stoked to take you guys along with me. So here we go. So this is my like more expensive rack. So everything on here is like $25 up to like a hundred plus dollars. So I just thought it'd be good to separate them out. Obviously I have it color coded. I'll show you guys a few quick peeks of stuff that's on this rack. So I got jerseys. I got this Gucci bootleg, movie tee, CDG, some band tees. So obviously like these are gonna be like the hundred plus dollar ones. It's like Windows tee, this Lakers tee. So yeah, I have some really solid shirts on this rack for sure. Like easy, like 50 to $100 shirts. So I'm, I'm confident with like this rack. And then my other rack that I'm gonna show you guys is my cheaper rack. So the lighting's not as good and I don't have as much space to show you guys, but everything on this rack is gonna be five to 20 bucks. And I have it color coded. I have some kid stuff. I need to get some kid hangers for these guys, but some kid stuff right here. And then it's just white to black. And then on the end, I have collared. So I have some long sleeve and short sleeve like button ups or polos, stuff like that. So yeah, basically all of these are five to $20 tees. I didn't put prices on anything just cause when I went to Rose Bowl, uh, no one had prices on anything. And I feel like it's just kind of easier to work with people when you don't have prices on things. I almost feel like if you do put prices on things and they're like 10 15 dollars off of what someone would want to spend they don't even like ask sometimes because they'd feel rude so i'd rather have just a rack of stuff for like five to 20 bucks and if i had something that i wanted 15 for and someone's like would you do 10 or is this a 10 dollar shirt then i can just say yes or give someone a better deal uh based on like how much stuff they're grabbing that's just how i look at it in my mind uh i'd rather shop something with no prices or just ask as i go you know i feel like it kind of builds a relationship with someone if you're just asking more about the pieces and stuff like that so i'm not doing marked prices so we'll see how that goes i got one more rack to show you guys so this is like my like outerwear rack i have some vests some windbreakers, crew necks, coats, stuff like that. Also, nothing here is marked. Most of this stuff is like anywhere from like 15 up to like 50, 60 bucks. So yeah, it is March. So getting towards the end of having outerwear, but I thought it would be good to still bring some. And then these are my final pickups from today at the bins. Really, really stoked about this one, this Kermit Klein shirt on a changes blank size large this is like a 60 70 dollar shirt so this is what i really wanted i really wanted like one more really good piece uh, i got this like early 2000s beatles tee probably be like 10 bucks planet hollywood tee 10 bucks this looks like a patagonia but it's not it's a columbia jacket so i'm stoked to bring this down i'll probably charge like 20 bucks for this guy so that's gonna be my setup and we are all packed for the cam gilly flea market it was a major challenge to get everything to fit. Uh, everything on top are blanks. I didn't think I'd be able to make them fit, but I did and hopefully I'm selling all of them so I won't have to deal with bringing them back. But yeah, this is what my car looks like. I don't even wanna open the side doors cause things might fall out, but we're gonna start the drive down today.
We got to Carl's Jr. Okay, so we got some finds on the way down to Portland. So I'm gonna show you guys. So Neil Young, 2007. This was like two bucks. No Effect shirt for two bucks. This like bootleg Stone Cold shirt for two bucks. This is like a comic from the 70s. It's like a 2000s print though, two bucks. Uh, just some blanks to customize. Got like a Nike one and then a champion one. I'm just gonna tie dye these guys. Got this like Roman Reigns shirt. I saw them on eBay for like 20 bucks. This is really sick. This like 90s ocean Pacific color blocked sweater. Really sick. That was like four bucks. This Kuji esque sweater that I know I'll still be able to get like 50 bucks for. So that's really cool. It's very, very like Kuji looking. Uh, this video game that's worth like $30. It's all scratched up though, so she gave it to me for free. I don't know if it's gonna work. It's gray tag, 90s, like Nike utility vest. Okay, so the spot we just went to was really, really good. So, got this. Okay, this was a really good one on a new rack. 99 cents for the vintage Levi's shirt. It says find your own way. That's crazy. This is a gray tag, early 2000s Nike shirt, just a hit. This Atlanta Falcons, this is actually a license to chalk line, 1993 I think. And that was like, a, that was like two bucks. This San Francisco, California Teach World Peace, like color block zip up coat. It's really pilled out, but it's still really, really sick. Uh, this is some Iranian dance. I think, or Islamic dance, I forget, but vintage single stitch. The colors are really sick. This like made in USA Google shirt. I think it's probably like mid 2000s, early 2000s, it was a dollar. Got this Starsky and Hutch shirt. I think it's one of those like shirts that's meant to look vintage. The tag looks like vintage, but it's not. So I think I could at least get 15 bucks for it though. It's like newer, probably like mid 2000s Tommy, just color block long sleeve. Okay, the two best things, 1994 Six Flags with Marvin the Martian, single stitch, that was $1.20. And then the best thing is this Guess, single stitch, Guess jean shirt. So the tag, XL, made in USA, single stitched. The embroidery is like tonal with this little hit. That one's crazy. So I didn't think we'd really find anything. So I just wanted to do a quick little update on what we found.
Okay, this is everything I got from Cam Gilly Flea Market minus this uh, Twin Peaks crew neck that I got in the mail from eBay. And this I bought off of my friend Isaiah. I guess I did get it at Cam Gilly, but I paid him like a week before for it, for that Star Wars Boba Fett. But yeah, I got some really crazy things, including a personal grail right here, but I'm just gonna go through them this way. So first off, 1995 Boba Fett Star Wars tee, it's single stitch, it's a big head tee, really, really sick. Wanted that for the personal. Also for the personal, this Lord Vader big all over print. There's no back print, but it's really sick. Armpits are blown out as you guys can see, but it was 20 bucks. So I thought it was worth it, especially if I'm just gonna be wearing it to bins and stuff. This downset take your life back tee. This is also gonna be a personal. They're like a really, really good lyrical hardcore band, kind of like rap rock kind of stuff. Star Wars trilogy special edition tee also for personal. The back print's really sick. This is another personal undying. Uh, we are 10,000 year Reich. This is like a vegan metalcore band that I really like. This one I was super hyped about. Interview with the Vampire, Tom Cruise, the big V on a giant Toltex. This was 30 bucks. I'm really stoked about that. I'm gonna go over here, save the best for last. I got this blur on a screen stars blank. It's a size medium. This one I'm probably gonna be reselling, uh, but I got it for a really good deal. I'm gonna skip over to this one. I also got from a homie on a really good deal. This Kurt Cobain, it has a signature on the back on a giant tag, size XL. Got that for a steal. And then this guy is the grail, the Serial Experiments Lane, 1999. This is my most wanted shirt, has been my most wanted shirt for like a few years now, so got it from my homie otaku bell really really appreciate you hooking me up with a good deal on it and i didn't have to pay up that much on it so i'm really really stoked i'll show you guys the backs of these now here's the back prints of everything that has a back print especially stoked on this one the drink for me and live forever this is the interview with the vampire one kirk cobain that's the lane close the world open the next twin peaks hit on the back is insane but yeah here are the back prints What's up y'all? So I am back from my pop-up and I kind of just wanted to talk about my experience a little bit. It was my first one I ever did and it was on my end of the year goal list to do a pop-up. So I did it. So I'm really excited that I did it. I'll just kind of tell you guys about my experience. So overall, it was a very positive experience and I got to meet a lot of people and I got to buy a lot of cool things, see what other people are selling, you know, kind of like trends and stuff like that, what people are buying. It was kind of like a research opportunity, also an opportunity for me to buy some pieces and then just to kind of test it out and see how it'd be being a predominantly internet-based seller trying to go into, you know, physical selling like pop-up and being out of fleas and stuff. I feel like a lot of people go one way or the other and I do see a few people kind of integrating it and doing both, but I wanted to see how it would be as someone who mainly has been selling internet based since 2011, 2010, when I first started selling on like eBay and stuff to kind of see what it would be like doing a physical pop-up. Since I am verified on Depop and I have a decent sized following and I'm making decent money on Depop weekly, it kind of just, I wouldn't say put me in my place, but it made me understand like where my market is. So my market is definitely more online driven just for price points, just for things that people are looking at. I feel like I have a better audience with like selling shirts for like 15, 20 bucks. And like they were shirts at the pop-up that like if people were asking me about them, I was saying like five bucks. So I feel like I have a better market on Depop, a little bit of a better following. And the things that people were wanting to buy that were my higher price items, like I was getting lowballed pretty bad on them. I remember one of my first asks of the day, um, I had these two jerseys and one was priced at like 30 and one was priced at 50. And a dude was like, could you do 40 for both? And I was like, no. And he like kept pressing me on it. He's like, dude, come on, do 40 for both. I'm like, no, I'm like giving you one for free essentially. So I did have some people, like some pushy people try to lowball me. I had some stupid experiences like that that like made me, I'd rather deal with people being dicks on Depop than in real life because I can't handle it because then I just get mad. So I'm glad that I was able to take a step back and realize uh, how selling in person is. So if I was to do it again, I would rather do it closer to me. I had to drive two and a half hours to go down to sell at that flea. 
and it was like 120 bucks for my spot. So if I were to do it again, I'd wanna split a spot with someone so I could pay half that or get a smaller space or something, or I'd rather just do it up in my area, possibly for a cheaper amount so that I wouldn't have to, you know, pay for the travel down and everything. I bought a lot of stuff and that's why I am really glad that I went and I would go again as a buyer. I would definitely go again to buy off of people or to trade. Basically with purchasing and selling and price of my booth, I broke even, which I'm happy about because that was my like bottom goal was just to break even. What I mean by break even is I made the 120 bucks back I spent on my booth payment and then I made all of the money back on things that I spent and I did buy a decent amount of stuff. I'd say I bought around like probably almost $500 worth of stuff. So I made around $600 or so, but then I just deducted the cost of the booth and everything I bought. So I am still glad because I didn't let go anything really crazy and I was able to come out with some crazy stuff for myself or to resell. So it was overall a good experience. I really, really liked it. I really liked all the vendors there. It was the Cam Gilly Flea Market. They did a really good job of putting it on. I heard them talking about maybe doing it outdoors in the summer. I think that'd be really, really sick. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a look at what it is like being a mainly online based seller trying to go in and do a pop up. Everyone is going to be different. Every case is going to be different, you know, but overall, I'm still really glad that I did it and it was a positive experience and I got to get some insane gems that you guys saw. So yeah, I'm glad that I'm able to do a video like this too. I haven't really looked at up before but I feel like not many people have done like a my first pop-up video or something like that so I'm glad I get to bring some like variation to the channel and stuff with this video too so if you guys liked it leave a like and subscribe I'd really really appreciate it and follow my Instagram and Depop and if I end up doing another pop-up like in the summer or something I'm sure I'll make another video out of it but for now I'm Jackson with Elvis Vintage I appreciate all you guys and peace out